uh, get saddled in here tonight. We have an uh, awesome night uh, as we get ready to start another, another wonderful Bible study um, in the Lord. And uh, we're just praying and believing for uh, God to move and God to show up and um, just encouraging, encouraging. Hallelujah. 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 So if you're here watching tonight, thank you for going into, um, this is our, this is actually going into our fourth week. So uh, what an awesome, what an awesome, awesome, awesome uh, opportunity it is to uh, see how God is operating and, and uh, what God is doing. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 I guess that's not going to work. I was trying to uh, get on tonight. Amen. Well, hallelujah. It's good to be in the house tonight. Good to be part of what God is doing and what God wants to do. And uh, we're again, we're here in another set. We're going to be using this set for the, uh, uh, for the next Bible study that we're doing right now. And uh, I pray that you will be blessed. We're here again in the CTF TV studios and um, just encouraged um, and just uh, I, I'm being blessed more and more and more and more. What an opportunity. I thank you all. You don't know how much it means to me, it encourages me uh, when uh, I get comments back from the Bible studies and uh, people that are watching. And for those out there that are just tuning in, just letting so you know, uh, we're doing a Bible study every night at 7 o'clock, an opportunity for us to, to get together, for us to be able to uh, just continue to, uh, uh, even if you're just typing on Facebook or at your home watching, just to encourage you, just to continue to keep that encouragement going on. Because we're in the midst of, of a lot of stress, a lot of uh, 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 fear and uh, all kinds of different stuff. So tonight, I just want to welcome you to uh, another night. As you can see on the screen tonight, this series that we're going to be going through is called Follow Me. And um, it's very simple. It's just basically about many different topics, but ultimately, it is about following Christ. It's, it's ultimately about walking with Jesus in our everyday life. And um, I think it's very, very important sometimes that we sometimes get very simplistic. Um, for even for those that are out there that are mature, you'll be blessed by this. And for those that are just bathed in Christ, guess what? This will encourage you and start to even grow you even to a deeper, deeper understanding of Christ Jesus and following Him. Um, so, you know, tonight, tonight's message or tonight's Bible study uh, for tonight is entitled Obedience to God. And we're going to be talking about obedience, obedience and disobedience. And we're going to be going through the scriptures, we're going to be going through some different illustrations that I hope and I pray that you will be encouraged tonight as, uh, as the Lord just ministered to you by the power of His Spirit. So let's just open up in prayer. Father, we thank you, Lord God, for yesterday. We thank you, Lord God, for Friday. We thank you, Lord God, for Saturday. We thank you, Lord, for today, Lord. Lord, as we celebrated, Lord God, a unique way, as your church celebrated a unique way, it was really no different than the way it was back with the disciples because, Lord, you were absent from them, and they were absolutely in their homes. They, were, they didn't have the synagogue to go to because they were fearful that maybe something would happen to them. And Father, yesterday, Lord God, we were in our own homes, but yet the word went forth and went out in, in a mighty power. Father, I thank you, Lord, for the River Church. I thank you, Lord, for the many different churches in Salem County, New Jersey, uh, the East Coast, the Midwest, and the West Coast, and around the world who continue to lift your name, continue to uh, uh, just give you praise and glory and, and honor. Father, we adore you tonight, Lord God, because we know that, Lord God, that you are ultimately in control. You are ultimately setting the footsteps in front of us so we know where we need to go. Father, I thank you, Lord, for the peace that surpasses all human understanding, that your peace will reside in us. As you said, you said, I give you my peace, not as the world gives. 
It's a different kind of peace. And Father, we thank you, Lord, for that rest. We thank you for that peace. And Father, tonight, as we go through this Bible study, help us, Lord God, to be in a place where we are willing, Lord God, to change. Father, that's what you're trying to do in our lives right now. You are putting all kinds of opposition and things around us. And Lord God, you're allowing those things to come to pass so that we can truly change and become more and more and more growing towards you and towards you and crying out to you and praying and believing by faith that you are doing some amazing things. So Father, tonight, Lord God, hide this vessel behind the cross so that, Lord God, that you would be lifted up, you would be glorified, you would be honored. Lord, let no man take credit. Let no man, Lord God, be glorified. For, Lord God, it's all you and only you. And, Father, we thank you for it. Holy Spirit, we ask you that you would permeate in this place and in every home, wherever this video, wherever this tell brothers broadcast is going. That, Father, Lord God, that you will, you will, Lord God, Lord, change, chastise, do whatever you need to do to get us to the place of perfection, Lord God. We desire to be, Lord God, transformed and changed by the power of your Spirit into the image of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord and our Savior. And everybody said, Amen and Amen. Well, as I said tonight, we're talking about obedience to God. And we're going to be talking a little bit, but I want to share this little quick story, and I think you'll kind of get the grip of where we're going. It was a small child was asked to sit down in the car. And I can't drive until you sit and buckle your seatbelt, said the mother. No, replied the child, and I will tell you again, sit down and buckle your belt. No, was the defiant answer. You either sit down and obey me, or we're both going to get out of the car and I'll spank you, responded the exasperated, exasperated mother. And the child just glanced at her slightly, silently, as the mother began to open the door to make good on her threat, the child immediately sat down and buckled up the belt. That's better, said the mother. As they began to drive off, the child sat under his breath, but loud enough for the mother to hear, I may be sitting down on the outside, but I'm standing up on the inside. And isn't that the way we are at times? Isn't that the way we become defiant? That we go along with whatever we need to do, but down deep inside of our heart, we're saying, I may be doing it, but I just don't like to do it. So we're talking tonight about obedience. Obedience to God. The first thing we have to realize is obedience maintains the harmony. It maintains the harmony with God. While the opposite is disobedience, which causes conflict. Disobedience to God is conflict. And that may come in many different ways. In our sin, in our defiant acts, in our thinking, in our words. Let me tell you, it's going to be a strong word tonight, but it's something I believe that we all can understand. Tonight we're going to ask you some questions. And, you know, you can type it out if you're watching Facebook or if you're home. You can go to our website and type some things in. But the second thing we also see is when a person is issuing the directives, does the right thing, does obedience, is for our well-being. The reason why the mother was telling the child to sit down was for her, his safety, so that he wouldn't fall out of the car, or he wouldn't, if there was a sudden stop, he wouldn't come off and he wouldn't hurt himself. Obedience, obedience is nothing more but not willing to listen to that which is really good or best for you. And the third thing we see here is, Obedience is not the same as mere conformity to someone's wishes. How often are we standing up on the inside and though we're sitting down on the inside? True obedience, done willingly, out of the trust and in the one with authority. So when we realize that God starts to speak to us, and what happens is, and this is most of the time when you think about it, 
It's our sin. It's our, uh, our anger, our bitterness, our jealousy, our frustration. All those things that, that encompass the sin nature that causes us to be rebelling. Remember when, when Adam and Eve were in the garden. Very, very, very prime example. We're all familiar with that. While they were in the garden, we see that they were obedient up until the serpent tells Eve, asks Eve, and says, Hey, did God say that? Did God really do that? He was trying to get her to do what? To disobey. Because when we disobey, we fall into conflict. Now think about that. If you look around right now in all the world and all the things that are going on, you know, the Democrats don't like the Republicans, the Republicans don't like the Democrats, people don't like the president, president, da, da, da. we can go on and on and on. We can go in with politicians. We can say, hey, look, you know, I don't like what they're doing here. Is this, is this, um, is this a, uh, 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 essential? Is this thing here essential? Is going to the, is the, is the frozen custard stand that's down open in Pennsville, is that essential? I mean, we can go through all of these things and the thing ends up being is we get so consumed about our feelings and about what we want instead of listening to the Spirit of God who truly wants nothing more but for us to be obedient. So, the very first thing we're going to talk about is what is obedience? What is obedience? And what does it mean to have authority? Well, we talked about it over the past three weeks. We talked about the authority that Christ Jesus has. All authority has been given to him in heaven and earth and below the earth. All authority. So therefore, that he is in authority. So everything that the Spirit of God wants you to do or asks you to change in your life, if you don't do it, you are actually contrary to God's word because actually Jesus is in authority. Now think about it. Today, we have people that don't like to listen to police. They don't like to listen to those that are in authority. I don't like them. I don't like what they're doing. I don't like. It doesn't matter. If that person is in authority, that person has a certain godly attribute or a godly uh, position to ex exert authority over each and every one of us. So the bottom line ends up being is, who has the authority that we need to listen to that we're talking about? Obviously, God has the ultimate authority. Christ Jesus has been given that authority. And the Holy Spirit is there inside of us who is trying to get us to the place for us to become what? Obedient. Obedient in small things. The small, still voice that the Spirit of God may say to our heart and say, you know what? You shouldn't do that. You shouldn't go there. You ought to go down in repentance. You ought to go tell that person, I'm sorry, and you should have never said that, or should have never done that. There are things that the Holy Spirit wants us to do. He wants us, he does it because he is an authority, and he is one who knows the best for us, the best for you, the best for me. Think about it. If God is our Father, wouldn't it be more, it would be better for us, I was going to say more better, isn't it better for us to obey and to listen? Throughout the scriptures, from Genesis to Revelation, it's all basic instructions before leaving earth. It tells us how we can come alongside of listening to the Spirit of God so that we can become obedient. How many times in our lives are we not obedient because we think we're okay, we think we're right? So let's go over to 1 Timothy. In 1 Timothy, and we're going to read in uh, chapter 2, verse 1 to 3. It says, Therefore, I exhort, I exhort first of all that supplications, prayers, intercessions, and giving of thanks be made for all men. Now let me stop right there. I know I'm going to hit some, hit some nerves. Listen to me. Do you pray for the people you don't like? Do you pray for the people that you really have some opposition with? You see, it says here to exhort first of all that supplications, prayers, intercessions, and giving of thanks be
be made for who? All men. For all women. For all children. Do you pray for the Muslim? Do you pray for the Jehovah Witness? Do you pray for the person who just ridiculed you and talked about you? Or do you try to figure out a way to get even with them? Tip for tat. So they hit you once, you got to hit them back twice. They hit you twice, you hit them back three times because you got to get the last edge in. It says, for all kings and all who are in authority, that, listen, that we may lead a quiet and peaceable life in all godliness and reverence. For this is good and acceptable in the sight of God our Savior. We could stay on this all night. We could stay on this all night and pick it apart. But I just want to show a couple things here. Do you know it says, listen, we're back in the times where they were kings. They weren't presidents. They were kings. So now, can we, let's, let's, let, me, let me just do it this way. Let me just put it in perspective of today. Therefore, I exalt first. Of all that supplications, prayers, intercessions, and giving of thanks be made for all men and women and children, for the president, and for the leaders, and all who are in authority, that we may lead a quiet and peaceable life in all godliness and reverence. For this is good and acceptable in the sight of God our, our Savior. Tonight we're talking about obedience. Do we want to listen to the word or do we obey it? Do we walk in obedience or do we say, hmm, well, I don't quite agree with that. Then you're out of line because this is God's word. God's word for us. Do you want to live this, this nation to live a peaceable, quiet life of all godliness and reference? What should we be doing? Our prayers, our supplication, our intercessions, our giving of thanks for all people and for those that are in leadership and those that are in authority. And I know, I'm telling you right now, there, you know, I'm just going to put it right out. I did not vote for President for President um, <laughs> I was, it's good to say, President Trump. Amen. I voted for um, uh, um, uh, the Christian that was it was a write-in. It was a write-in. And I voted for him. But does that mean that I don't like or it doesn't matter? Because I want to hold to 1 Timothy 2, 1 to 3 and many other scriptures because I want to be obedient to God's word. It's not about what you think. It's not about what you believe. It's not about what you agree with. It's about listening to the word of God. Remember, in the Old Testament, guess what? They got many kings. Many kings that destroyed the nation of Israel and destroyed the nation of peoples. Why? Because they got exactly what they wanted. So I want you to realize God knows what he's doing. God knows exactly what's happening. God knows exactly who needs to be in what office, where he needs to be, and what needs to be done. Does that mean that we don't have a right to be able to vote and do? No, we do what we do. But the bottom line is, being is listen, I'm not getting into politics. I'm getting into the word of what the word says. If you don't like what I'm saying, take it up with God. It's got nothing to do with what we're talking about, obedience, obedience to God. So think about that. In what ways do you respond or have you responded to authority? How about in the government? How do you respond? Are you angry at certain things because somebody said because it, it rubs you the wrong way? Or how about parents? For those that are younger out there that still have your parents with you, do you listen to them? They are still your authority. How about in sports? Do you listen to the coach or you just want to go out there and do what you want to do? How about church? Are you sitting here listening to what the pastor may say or your pastor may say? or somebody that's on the network, or whatever it may be, are you listening and taking the word, not what he says, but the word of what is being shared, and be obedient. Be not just hearers of the word, but be doers of the word. So let's look at this. I want you to go over to Luke chapter 6. Luke chapter 6, verse 46. Jesus sums it up very, very, very simple. Very, very simple. 
He literally puts it into practical terms so that we can realize. Jesus says this, but why do you call me Lord, Lord, and, and, and not do the things which I say? Think about that. We could stop right there and just go into a 20 minute of just prayer and repentance. Why do we stand in church with our hands up and sing, or sing words of Lord, oh Lord, I love you. I love you, Lord, and I lift my voice. We see these songs, but guess what? If we're not listening, if we're not obeying, if we're not calling, if we're not following what he asks us to do, how can we call him Lord? How can we call him Lord? Jesus is saying, listen, for you to be obedient and to line up, it's not just, it's not just who I am, but also understanding what I am. I am the Word. I am that which will transform you. I am that which will truly, truly change the very fiber of your being. I am the Word. In John chapter 1, what's it say? In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. In verse 14, it says, and the Word became flesh. It became a living thing. He became a living man, a living human being, all God and all man. He was the Word, the Word, the Word. When Jesus died on the cross, the Word died. Listen to me. The Word died. The human flesh died. But the word continues, because the word will never return void, and it is the same yesterday, today, and forever. It never changes. That's the awesomeness about the word of God. What God wants to do is transform us into a place where we become obedient to him, obedient to everything that he has written. Why do people don't want to read the word? Because if I read the word, I've got to do something. So I'm not going to read the word. Because if I don't read the word, then I'm not held accountable. But yes, you are. Because, you, because as a born-again believer, you better know what the word of God says. You better listen and you better realize what the, God, what the word of God says. So, that's talking about what does our level of obedience to God show us? What is our level of obedience? How do we determine that as we see through the scriptures? Amen? Well, let me go back to John. Excuse me. Uh, yeah, we'll go to John 14, verse 13 and 16. It says, And whatever you ask in my name, that will I do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If you ask anything in my name, I will do it. If you love me, if you love me, keep my commandments. And I will pray the Father, and he will give you another helper, that he may, he may abide with you forever. So we see, what is our level? What is our level, our level of obedience to God? Think about it. What is your level tonight? He says that whatever you ask in his name, so obviously you pray. And when you're done praying, you say, in the name of Jesus. You pray with a sincere heart. He says he will do it. And ultimately the Father is going to be glorified in the Son. Word. It's a two-letter word. And that word, if. Remember there's a word that says, if I sin. If I sin. He is faithful and just to forgive me of my sin and cleanse me from all unrighteousness. So many times we don't look at that little word, if. And God is conditional. See, if we, if we draw nigh to him, he will draw nigh to us. I encourage you tonight, maybe during this week or sometime during your Bible study or over the time that you have right now, is go and look up the word if in the Bible. How many times it is used? It is a conditional word. That means if you do this, this will happen. If you do this, you say, well, God's going to do it every single time. Only if. He says, if you ask anything in my name, I will do it for you. If, if you love me, if you love me, you'll keep my commandments. You'll keep my statutes. 
What was God, what was the first commandment? What was the one that Jesus said? Jesus says, I sum up all the commandments into two. Love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, thy soul, and thy mind, and love your neighbor as yourself. That summed up the Ten Commandments. That summed up a lot of the statutes and judgments in the Old Testament. It sums it all up. Love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, thy soul, and thy, and thy strength and thy mind. For everything you have, believe who he is. Obey what he says. Obey and understand that. Hallelujah. If we go over to Matthew, in Matthew chapter 22, verse 37, Jesus says to him, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind, as we just said earlier. To understand this, he wants us to be obedient. Why? Well, we're going to get into it a little bit later on. Why is obedience to God so important? Why is it so important? There's blessings in obedience. There is peace in obedience. There is joy in obedience. There is comfort in obedience. When we are, remember what I shared earlier. You see, when we are disobedient, conflict comes. When we are obedient, we are walking in peace and joy. Are you walking in peace and joy today? Are you walking in that place that God wants you to walk? A walk of of absolute plea, of being walking in Him. Because when we're walking in Him, we have that peace. We have that joy. That no matter what is going on around us, yes, there will be some struggles. Yes, you'll get hit. Yes, there will be some side swiping. Yes, there will be some things. But ultimately, that whatever the enemy means for bad, God's going to turn around for something good. That's the awesomeness about where we are and what we can do. Go over to Matthew, chapter 12, verse 46 to 48. Let's look at it. He says, while he was still talking to the multitudes, behold, listen, behold, his mother and his brothers stood outside, seeking to speak to Jesus. And then one said to him, look, your mother and your brother are standing outside, seeking to speak to you. See, the disciples were saying, Jesus, listen, your mother and your brother here, I think they want to talk to you. But he answered, Jesus answered, and said to the one who told him, Who is my mother? And who are my brothers? And he says, and he stretched out his hand towards his disciples and said, Here are my mother and my brothers. For who, so whosoever, listen, listen, Whosoever does the will of my Father in heaven is my brother and sister and mother. He clearly put it out there. He went from the physical. The disciples were looking at the physical. But Jesus was already looking at the spirit, spiritual. What did he say? He says, for whosoever does the will of my Father in heaven. He was looking at them saying, listen, guys, guys you better get up into the spiritual understanding here. It's not all about flesh. Yes, that's my earthly mother and that's my earthly brother. But guess what? So are you. See, you're my brother and sister. You're my sister. And there are, there are women, there are women in my life that I call mother. There are women in my life that are not my mother. Hallelujah. There's a woman in our church named Sandy who is a very precious, precious mother to me. She loves me and I love her. But she has such a spiritual genuineness. Yes, do I look at my mother? Yes, I look at my mother, my natural mother, as a mother in the spiritual, spiritual sense also. But Jesus clearly puts it down. See, folks, we've got to realize that it's not just, you know, how many times it says that, 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 uh, that blood is thicker than water? How many times do you hear that? You hear that, you know, with family. And family says, you know, but the bottom line of being is there are believers in your life right now that are closer than your brother or your sister or either of your parents. Why? Because of the connection we have. And that connection, that's why we need to pray for one another. That's why we need to lift one another up. That's why we need to continue to pray and believe that God is doing a work today. and He's bringing us closer and closer together. Even in the midst of us not being together. Just think about it. 
Somebody had mentioned it the other day, and it just it rang a bell in my spirit that there's no difference between what happened yesterday and what happened back in Jesus' time. That the disciples, they were all scattered to their homes. They were all sitting there. They didn't know what to do. Just like now. Guess what? What a blessing it is. Do we look at it as a blessing or do we look at it as a cursing? That's up to you. Because if you're looking in the spiritual sense, if you're truly, truly, truly looking in what God is doing, I'll tell you, God is moving by His power and by His Spirit. God is doing some stuff right now. Can I explain it? No. Can anybody else on this earth explain it? No. But God, God is revealing Himself in ways just by this. Let me tell you, I'm just going to share it right now, is that our website with our sermons and what we're doing uh, here with the Bible studies and stuff like that is blown off the charts. There are people right now that have not been to Bible study. There are people from other countries that are looking and looking to get into Bible study that they can check it out and they can see it. It's nothing about me. It's about what God is doing. God is revealing himself in many, many ways. This stuff would never have happened if we would continue in the church the way it was. But God is orchestrating it. How is it going to end up? I don't know. But I do know one thing, that God is in charge, and God is moving, and God is doing some incredible things. So, as we get into the, some of the scriptures that we go into now, why is obedience to God so important? This is a key to help us to understand why we need to be more repentant, why we need to be more seeking Him. Why we need to be more listening to the Spirit of God every single moment of the day. Just the other day, uh, just telling you, it was very, I met with uh, uh, Pastor Jarvis from Faith, Faith uh, Farm. And uh, we were talking about the possibilities of having a service on Sunday out of Faith Farm. And, you know, because uh, they do feed food. And since they do feed food, they are an essential part of being able, we could go out there, we could all, our church and any other churches, his church, and gather together and literally have a breakfast. And, and it was real, man, it was sounding really great. But there was something down deep inside of my spirit that just was not settled. And I said, well, I'll pray over it. And Pastor Jarvis said, I'll pray over it. And you know, we got off the phone and he called me about a half hour later. In the meantime, the Spirit of God had already spoken to me. And the Spirit of God was already speaking to him. He said, you know what? He says, I think we ought to just hold back because, you know, it's integrity. Our ministries are in, I have to be operated by integrity. And it's not about, it's not about, well, you know, we're Christians and so we can just do whatever we want to do because God told me, you know what? The Spirit of God was speaking to him and, and speaking to me. So obviously, there's a, there's a connection there. So when, when there was a confirmation, we agreed. We agreed to what was happening. See, don't listen to what people out there saying. You know what? If you're, you're, you're some weak Christians if you're not having church. Man, let me tell you, I haven't heard the Spirit of God say that. I haven't heard the Spirit of God say to me, say, you know, Eric, you better get down on your hands and knees and start repenting. And start repenting because you're not having church. You'd rather be persecuted. You rather, would you rather have church? You want to get, you know, the Spirit of God is not speaking to me. I have peace right now. Why? Because I want to be obedient, 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 obedient is better than sacrifice. What good is it to sacrifice your life? No, I'm not getting into it because you know what? Listen, overseas, there's a lot of there's a lot of, of Christians right now that are being beheaded. They don't have the technology we have. Does that mean we're cheaping it? No, the Bible says, guess what? That never forsake, never forsake the assembling of your brothers as you see the day approaching. It doesn't say in a church. We're assembling right near now. You know, we're getting average of maybe 100 to 200 to 250 people watching every Bible study every single night. We've never had that in church. We've never had it. We're a small church of maybe 50, 60, maybe good time, good, good, good day, maybe 70 people. But guess what? There are hundreds now of people watching. What an opportunity it is to be able to do and to be what God has called us to be. Obedience. Sometimes we just got to step out of our, our own lives, out of our own, own 
desires, our own ambitions. And you know what? Just be, just be, just be what God's called us to be. Hallelujah. That's all, that's all free side stuff. Amen? Okay, I want you to go over to 1 Thessalonians. Excuse me. 1 Thessalonians, verse, chapter 4, verse 1 to 3. It says, Finally then, brethren, we urge and exhort in the Lord Jesus that you should abound more and more, just as you receive from us how you ought to walk and to please God. For you know what commandments we gave you through the Lord Jesus. For this is the will of God, your sanctification, that you should abstain from sexual immorality. And then, even in, in verse 4 and on down, it talks about, excuse me, the sexual immorality that was going on. But, and, and it's going on today too. But we should abound more and more. Exhort, we urge to exhort in the name of Jesus Christ, in our Lord Jesus Christ, in our Lord. Why do you do the same? Why do you call me Lord, Lord, and not do what I ask you to do? It says in here in 1 Thessalonians, it says, to walk and to please God, for you know what commandments we gave you through the Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. That his will, that this is the will of God, your sanctification, your process, your process of being delivered, your process of, of being saved. Yes, you, you were saved, you are saved, and you're being saved. Hallelujah. So we see here, there, what effort does, it, does our obedience have on God? What, 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 what effort? Our effort, our effort, our effort on the obedience of God. I want you to turn over and let's look at Ephesians. Let me finish out here. That each of you should know how to possess his own vessel in sanctification and honor. That what? Each of you should know how to possess his own vessel in sanctification and honor. That's why we're having Bible studies. That's why we're having times together. Why? It is to, for iron to sharpen iron. For you to be encouraged. And for you to encourage me. That guess what? You yourself, you have to do your own. It is, it is what? Renewing our minds on a daily basis. It's that process that our own vessel in sanctification and honor. That we should know how to do that. You should know. That's why it's important for obedience. What is my job as a pastor or as an as a, as a, uh, uh, under-shepherd? What's my job? My job is to see and to listen to the Spirit of God and to literally help you, help you as sheep because I'm a sheep in God's, in, in, in God's, in God's uh, flock as, as we're all together. I know greater than you, know better than you, but I do know one thing, that God has given me an authority just like he has given you an authority. So the thing that ends up being is, do we listen or do we say, well, we take it, we go, we say, you know what, I'm going to go to church today and be like a, a banquet. So I'm going to pick and choose what I want to hear, but the stuff that I know that I have to change and be obedient to God, I don't want to do. And we go week after week after week after week, and we don't change. We don't change. We continue to do the same things over and over and over. Why do you call me Lord and you don't do what I ask you to do? That's what Jesus is saying. Jesus is crying out. He wants, God wants us to be obedient. Jesus wants us to be obedient. The Holy Spirit wants us to be obedient. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Over, as I said, go over the Psalms. So how does obedience protect us? Obedience protect us. Listen to the, we're going to read two out of Psalms and one into Romans. And, and in Psalms 32, verse 3 to 5, it says, When I keep silent, my bones grow old through my groaning all day long. Listen to what I'm saying here. Here is, here is, here is the psalmist who is crying out, crying out. 
because I don't repent, because I don't confess, because I don't, because I keep it inside. My bones grow old through my groaning all day long. For day and night your hand was heavy upon me. You're heavy, your weight, you're 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 getting us to 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 confess, you're getting us to come back to him. My vitality was turned into draught of summer. Selah, acknowledge my sin to you, and my iniquity I have not hidden. I said, I will confess my transgressions to the Lord, and you forgave the iniquity of my sin. Think about it. Jesus on the cross, let me go back, listen to what I'm saying, this is so exciting. Listen to what I'm saying. On the cross, Jesus forgave our sins. Jesus forgave your sin, my sin, from the past, from the present, from the future. He has forgiven our sins. And we, we don't take the thing for granted. We don't take repentance. We take repentance for granted instead of embracing repentance that when we do sin, not when temptation comes, but when we do fall into sin, that guess what? The obedience act of us in repentance brings us back into that place of right standing with the Father. Hallelujah! How do we get, we don't have to sacrifice, we don't have to grow up our own uh, 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 lamb as unblemished and take it to the temple and, 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 and slice it and kill it so it, it covers our sin. That's already been done through Christ Jesus. Listen, saints. For us to be sitting there and, and being silent and our bones grow old through groaning all day long because of all the, uh, we, we, we're crying out and the stuff that, oh, Lord, forgive me, Lord, forgive me, forgive me, forgive me. Hallelujah. Repentance is one of the greatest things that we can have. Thank you, Jesus. It says in verse 32, 6 and 7, and let's look at it, for this cause, Everyone who is godly shall pray to you in time when you may be found. Surely in a flood of great waters they shall not come near him. You are my hiding place. You shall preserve me from trouble and you shall surround me with songs of deliverance. What is the benefit? What are the ways and how does Obedience protect us. Obedience. Obedience that when the Spirit of God says, that, guess what, get down on your knees and ask for forgiveness. Get down on your knees and ask the God to help you. Guess what, when we're in obedience, when he says, hey listen, I need you to go over there and do something, and we are obedient, what is he doing? He says, you are in my hiding place. You shall preserve me from trouble. You shall surround me with songs of deliverance. That guess what? That when you're obedient, God cries over you songs of joy. Hallelujah. He is our hiding place. He's the one who preserves us, preserves us from trouble. When? When we're walking in obedience. When we're walking in repentance. When we're walking in that place. That's why this whole, whole lesson as we go through this week and maybe into next week, Follow me. Jesus is saying, listen, why do you call me Lord, Lord, but don't do what I ask you. Don't do what I say. I've given you my word. I went all the way to the cross. Why do you still not listen to me? Why do you still not obey me? Why do you still not repent? Why do you still, I've given you everything that you need according to godliness. Over in Psalms 119.45, for, I'll start with 43 to 45. And take not the word of truth utterly out of my mouth. <laughs> for I have hoped in your ordinances. So shall I keep your law continually, forever and ever. And I will walk at liberty, for I seek your precepts. He says, this what? I'm going to keep the truth. I'm going to keep it here. I'm going to not speak the things that are negative, the things that are contrary. 
I am going to literally, literally hold on to the ordinances and everything that you said, everything you said, Jesus. Why? So that I shall keep your law continually forever and ever, and I will walk in liberty. You can walk in peace. You can walk in freedom. You can walk in absolute joy. When, when? When, when? When you're walking in obedience. Walking in obedience to God. Hallelujah. Turn over to Romans. In Romans chapter 1, verse 26 to 27. For this reason God gave them up to vile passions. For even their women exchanged the natural use for what is against nature. Likewise also the men, leaving the natural use of women, burned in their lust for one another. Men with men committing what is shameful and receiving in themselves the penalty of their error which was due. Why are we bringing this up? Why are we bringing this up? Because of disobedience. Disobedience. Disobedience will literally bring you into chaos. Disobedience will literally bring you into opposition. Disobedience to God's word, not listening. And so what happens is I don't want to read God's word because if I don't read God's word, then I can live how I want to live and I can do what I want to do and, there's, and I ain't got to worry about it. But this, guess what, folks? You can say it now, but there's coming a time that, guess what? Everyone will stand before Christ. Everyone. And will be given, they have to give an account. Give an account. Those that are in Christ Jesus, that Jesus is going to see him in you and see the repentant heart and what you did with his blood, what you did with him on the cross. It's not just believing him and who he is. It's letting him be part of your life. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. And then in Romans 1, 28 and 29, continuing where we left off, and even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to a debased mind to do those things which are not fitting, being filled with all unrighteousness, sexual immorality, wickedness, covetousness, maliciousness, full of envy, murder, strife, deceit, evil-mindedness, and they were worshiper, whis whisperers. Folks, do you see what disobedience brings? Disobedience today, even in the world, when you look around, why is there sexual immorality, wickedness, covetousness, maliciousness, envy, murder, strife, deceit, all that stuff is going on. Power, I need more power. What God is really saying is, you're disobedient. And because of that, he gave them over to a reprobate heart. Where he says here, God gave them over as a debased mind. Hallelujah. Folks, obedience. And then he said, backbiters, haters of God, violent, proud, boasters, inventors of evil things, disobedience to parents, undiscerning, untrustworthy, unloving, unforgiving, come on folks, unmerciful, who, knowing the righteous judgment of God, that those who practice such things are deserving of death, not only do the same, but also approve of those who practice them. Very similar. Do you see, do you see how the enemy, if the enemy can get us into disobedience, Listen to me, brothers and sisters out there. You know one of the great one of the, one of the things that I believe is one of the greatest enemies and the greatest tactic of the enemy is for the believers to sow discord among one another. I don't like that person because of the way they act or treat me. In in, in the Old Testament, it says there's six things that God hates, and one is an abomination. Abomination. Sowing discord among brethren. Folks, we as the body of Christ, we have to stop it. We have to come into the alignment of the body of, uh, of what the obedience of God. Coming into it says to me, you take care of it right. You put on your bootstraps. You pull up your pants and become a man and start to repent. Hallelujah. 
Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. So what effect does obedience and disobedience have on our conscience? I know we're, wow, we're running, man, we're running. <laughs> Hallelujah. I'm going home with this one, man, because we ain't stopping because the Spirit of God is just, I believe, really moving here. Ephesians 4, 17 and 18. This I say, therefore, and testify in the Lord that you should no longer walk as the rest of the Gentiles walk in the futility of your mind, having their understanding darkened, being alienated from the life of God because of the ignorance that is in them, because of the blindness of their heart. He says, don't walk like that. He says, who being past feelings have given themselves over to lewdness, to work of all uncleanliness with greediness. But pastor, I, I go to church, I read the word. Come on, let's be real with one another. Let's be real with one another. That's why we started two weeks, three weeks ago. Battle for your life. The enemy wants to kill, destroy, to rob, and steal. He wants to take your joy. He wants to take your peace. He wants to take everything that Jesus Christ has given you and destroy it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Over in 1 Timothy, in 1.19, having faith and a good conscience, which some having rejected concerning the faith, have suffered shipwreck. Why? Because having their faith and good conscience. Good conscience. That means that, guess what? That when you do something, just as I was sharing about with Pastor Jarvis, of good conscience, the Spirit of God spoke to both of us, and we confirmed it one another because our conscience... Listen, I went to bed that night, and I'm sure that Pastor Jarvis went to bed that night. And we went to bed that night, and guess what? We both probably slept like babies. Why? Because we had good conscience because of the faith that we believed that the Spirit of God was speaking to our heart. Hallelujah. In 1 Timothy, in chapter 4, verse 1 and 2, it says, now the Spirit expressly says that in the later times, some will depart from the faith, giving heed to what? Deceiving spirits and doctrines of demons, speaking lies in hypocrisy, having their own conscience seared with a hot iron. Our mind better be stayed on Christ, not stayed on Facebook, not stayed on the news, not staying on Instagram, not staying on the internet, not staying on what people around you that are, get, that are gossiping and this and that and this and that. Your mind better be stayed on Him. Your conscience better be in that place where you are hearing from the Spirit of God. So because of that, He is going to allow you and continue to support you and continue to build you up in the obedience of God. Because in the obedience of God, we have all the blessings of God. In the obedience of God, we can walk in that place of absolute peace and joy. Two scriptures, and then we're going to pray and close out. Hallelujah. Luke 6, 22 and 23. Blessed are you when men hate you, and when they exclude you, and revile you, and cast your name as evil for the Son of Man's sake. Rejoice in that day and leap for joy. What? What? When they hate me? When they exclude me from inviting me into their things? They revile me and cast me out? Rejoice? For indeed your reward is great. Where? In heaven. Not on earth. Your reward is in heaven because you're obedient to what the Spirit of God is speaking to you. For in like manner their fathers did to the prophets. Hallelujah. And in Luke chapter 20, or Luke 6, 27, 28. But I say unto you, here, love your neighbors. Do good to those that hate you. Bless those who curse you. And pray for those who spitefully use you. Somebody needs to hear this tonight. Somebody needed to hear that guess what? You need to stop. You need to stop hatred on those that have, who do you wrong. Maybe you have to stop. You got to start praying for them. It says, love your enemies. It says, love your enemies. I'm going to tell it right now. I'm going to speak it right out right now. I don't care whether you 
you like Trump or you hate Trump. He's the president of the United States. Listen to what I'm saying. This isn't political. This isn't, this isn't, I'm just being what the, what the scripture said. Scripture says pray for the kings or presidents that are in authority. Let me tell you, if you, if you post stuff, if you post stuff, and say that, I can't stand this idiot. I can't stand... you know what you're doing? It's sin. And you don't even know it. It's sin. Pray for him. Pray that God would open up his heart. Pray. If you're a believer, you better be doing that. If not, guess what? You're out of line, folks. Do good to those that hate you. That no matter what happens, find a way to bless them. Bless those who curse you. Hallelujah. And pray for those that despitefully use you. I have been used, used and abused for so long. Since, and for over 27 years in full-time ministry, let me tell you, there's been so many times where I just wanted to throw the towel in. But I didn't. Why? Because God says, you still have, you still have work to do. You still have work to do. And sometimes it gets frustrating. But let me tell you, you can't give up, folks. You can't give up. God wants us to be obedient. God wants to listen to his word. Take what this is. Here, listen. If you don't listen to anything but tonight, just listen to this scripture one more time, and then we're going to close out in prayer. He says, but I say to you, listen. Love your enemies. Do good to those that hate you. Bless those that curse you. And pray for those that spitefully use you. If you're home and you're watching this right now and you fall into any category of that, it's sin. It's disobedience. And what happens with disobedience? It comes a curse. It comes a curse. It doesn't become a blessing. Pray for those. Lift them up. Encourage them. We need to pray for the body of Christ right now. We need to pray for our president and all the politicians. We need to pray for our mayors and our governors. We need to pray for the police. We need to pray for our believers. We need to pray for your pastors and the churches because they're going through a whole change right now. Pray. Stop telling everybody what you think. Tell them what the Word of God says. Then you fall into the line of being obedient to God. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you tonight. I thank you for your goodness. I thank you for your grace. I thank you for your mercy. Father, continue, Lord God, to bless each and every one that's out there today. That, Father, Lord God, that you would open their eyes. They would take the word tonight. They would plan it. They would meditate on it. They would chew on it. They would digest it, Lord God. And, Lord God, that they would bear fruit and much fruit. And, Father, I thank you, Lord God, for all you're doing. We look forward to tomorrow night to gather again, Lord God, to encourage one another, build up one another, and Lord God, most of all, Lord God, to sense and feel your spirit. Holy Spirit, go with us and bless us. And Father, we thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Listen, real quick, I have a uh, uh, thing that I had done a long time ago, and it says, why am I a Christian? It's a very, it's a, it's, it's a, it's a 10 page, well actually 16, 15 page um, little booklet. And basically is why I'm a Christian. It tells you all about different things. About believing in God. Believing, excuse me, believing in God. Uh, the cost of discipleship. The Bible. Prayer. It, it's very good for those that are uh, still babe in Christ. Even for those that are out there that are mature. Just refresh yourself. But we have uh, plenty of these. We can copy them off. And I'd love to get them out to you. Listen, you can go to www.theriverenj.com. And uh, there's a new, uh, new page on there. You go to Stay in Touch. It comes right up and says Prayer Request. And you have prayer requests, you can put them on there and ask for a um, Why Am I a Christian? And we'll make sure we get one out to you. But uh, be, be encouraged, be blessed. I love you, and we'll see you tomorrow night. God bless.